Hank Green, one of the Vlog Brothers, founder of VidCon, entrepreneur, and geek. But what does it mean to be a geek? I asked him. Hey, Hank Green. Wow. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks for having me on this show. You're, you're it's welcome. It's good stuff. Oh, thank you. Where, uh, where are we right now? We are right now in the set of Crash Course Chemistry, where I teach chemistry to anybody who cares to learn about it. A gas gets dissolved into a solution the same way David Bowie and Freddie Mercury collaborate. Under pressure. Would you say knowing a lot about chemistry would make you a geek? I would say that there aren't very many people who know a lot about chemistry who are not geeks. Well then that leads to the next question, what is a geek? What is a geek in my head? What does society at large think a geek is? What do I think society thinks a geek is? Mm -hmm. I think that just being able to ask those three different questions about your one question kind of makes me a geek. <laughs> I wanted to find being a geek as being curious and curiosity and enthusiasm and interest. I think that there's a certain level of like you have to be excited, like unironically about stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's because like I want geek to sound like a really good thing because I've been called a geek my whole life. But others might think that a geek is someone who's sort of awkward and not into things that are normal and is weird. So you've been called a geek your whole life. Do you wear that label with pride? I wear that label with pride now. Why is that? Why now? Because I think that it's become more acceptable to be a geek when like comic book movies are everywhere, even though they're not that geeky anymore. Why do you think that geekdom has become more acceptable? I think that a lot of the paths to be successful and have lots of money are geeky paths. Like Bill Gates is a rich dude. I think he may be the richest dude. And he got there by geeking. And by geeking. By geeking. Put up a picture of him from the, his early days. Okay, Bill Gates, the geek. Oh man, yeah. that was a geeky guy. Do a picture of him next to Steve Jobs though. Don't they both look geeky? But, but Steve Jobs is kind of like cool geek. Well, he's because he wears the turtleneck. Yeah. Which makes him a little more mysterious seeming, I guess. Or He was always kind of a good looking dude though. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, that, uh, that aside. <laughs> um, I think that geek is cooler because there are a lot of cool things you can do being a geek. Like Iron Man, you know, Tony Stark. He's like all engineer and building and computer programming, but he's also awesome. Technology has become easier to use mm -hmm. and it's worked its way into the mainstream a little bit more. Here's another thing that might be it. Mm -hmm. Geekiness is more acceptable because now technology is the one way that we see invariably changing the world and also making it better. And so because technology springs from the minds of geeks, we see that as like, good on you. Thanks, geek, for my desalinization plant or extra awesome smartphone that can do everything and fits in my pocket. What do you geek out about? Oh. I geek out about understanding the world and like new insights into how the universe actually works. Check the news every morning and go, oh man, we know a thing today that we didn't know yesterday. Being figured out right now in the lab by geeks. So I geek out about geeks. I also geek out about Star Trek. Do go boldly. We do not split infinitives here where no nerd has gone before. Planning on geeking out about the new Star Wars movies. I'm nervous about it. Disney just bought Star Wars. No. But I want to geek out about I'm it. I'm pretty optimistic about, yeah. about it. I think it'll be better than the prequels. Prequels, yes. yeah. yeah. Why do you think it is though that, that geeks gravitate towards the weirder entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> the weirder entertainment. <laughs> like sci-fi and, or fantasy or, you mm -hmm. know, stuff that isn't in the real world. I think one, because it's nice to get out of this real world because it can be kind of oppressive and annoying and if you feel like you don't fit in it, then it's nice to imagine another world where you might fit better. But I also think that there's an element of being able to step back from the world allowing you to analyze it better. So you remove yourself a little bit from our culture, from you know our place in history, and you can think more about us contextualized within a broader universe. Do you think it's a good time to be a geek? I think it is a great time to be a geek. Or was there another time in history that was a good time to be a geek? I know a lot about the Mongols. I could totally geek out about the Mongols. One of the things that Genghis Khan did that no previous horde of steppe people had done, when he conquered places, he would take the intellectuals from those places and he would let them live, he would kill everyone else, and he would use their knowledge to administrate his kingdom better, better siege weapons and better technology for his 
people. They were illiterate, the Mongols, and so he would use them to adopt their written language. Wow, what a great guy. Yeah, and he and like he was like the first time this had ever happened with a nomadic steppe people. He actually built an empire that lasted beyond his rule. Because he uh, respected the geeks? Because he respected the geeks. That's... He didn't kill us. Like he killed everyone else. So if you ever want to take over uh, a large area of the world, respect the geeks. Thanks for talking with me, Hank. Thanks for talking with us, Hank Green and DFTBA. Up next, Matt and I take on sci-fi and fantasy cliches. And it gets pretty ridiculous.